What's up guys? Welcome back to Digital Diving, the proper gaming talk show where we dive into the latest news in gaming every single week. It is your boy Mr. Monkey with me today is SGK. What up? It is Friday, July 30th and we got a bunch of stuff to talk to you about today. Um, also, I don't know what YouTube's algorithm is like, however, uh, we're going to be talking about something a little bit more, you know, serious towards the end of the episode, so... If you guys could just share this video out because this is a topic that 100% needs to be brought to attention. You probably heard totally. about it before, but it needs a spotlight right now. So if you could, guys, like the video, share this with your friends on social media, whatever you feel like doing. And yeah, let's just jump into it. All right. Starting off with some lighter news, we got Pokemon in the news. So Pokemon, like Detective Pikachu especially, launched this live action trend for uh, like all these comic book movies. Those are Detective Pikachu, Sonic, you know, they're kind of building their own little Super Smash Brothers live action cinema world, which is, I really oh, hope actually no. legitimately happens. But <laughs> nah, um, I'm okay with that. But after this, the undeniable success of Detective Pikachu, uh, Netflix has actually come out and said that they are doing a peak live action Pokemon series led or written and produced by Joe Henderson, who also, I think, co-directed uh, Lucifer. And I don't know yeah, yeah, who he did. watched Lucifer. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen the show, but I've heard it's kind of good. Also, yeah, I've heard that. I'm strangely just attracted in love with to it. Lucifer. <laughs> I, every single time I see anything, it's like, is Lucifer good? All, uh, all I see is girls saying, yes, it's amazing. I'm like, oh, my God. Anyways... <laughs> Um, there's literally no info about this show. We don't know if it's going to be set in the same universe as Detective Pikachu, although that would be kind of cool because that universe is already built and functional. So that would be kind of cool if it does. Uh, we have literally no idea what this show is going to be. We just know there's a live action show coming. And I know you have your thoughts about live action video game movies and shit. <sighs> <laughs> so here's the thing, dude. Like, if there's some things that just don't translate well, whether you're talking about anime, whether you're talking about cartoons in general, and I feel like Pokemon is one of the things that just does not translate well to live action. Like, I, when it came to Detective Pikachu, I would have rather a more traditional Pokemon movie, you know, I mean, a yeah. trainer fighting against the odds, you know. Do, but then that would just look like animal cruelty, so they didn't do that. <laughs> and that's yeah, the thing, bit. it doesn't translate bit. well. Pokemon is animal cruelty. That's it. You're just... That's all you can, that's all you can say. <laughs> you know, so... And with this new... I doubt this is going to be a traditional show. It's probably no. going to be something where it doesn't have a lot of violence in it because then they would have to show, like, bloody beaten Pokemon everywhere. Like, I mean... I mean, Detective Pikachu did it really well, especially in the battles. Like, they did it really well where you didn't have to worry about, you know, bloody beaten Pokemon. They were just, you know... You saw them weaker, you saw them get hit hard, but it wasn't mm -hmm. that bad. And the Pokemon seemed to be like, you know, give their consent for this type of thing, too. So... <laughs> yeah, also Although, not really Pokemon. Well, I mean, yeah, they were. Your mind, you beat up a Pokemon, you capture it, it's yours. They have oh, no yeah. choice. Well, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, that, oh. I think, I think that in Detective Pikachu, the world they created had done it in a way that like Pokemon battles were illegal, you know, cause they were doing underground battles. Remember? In the yeah. Movie? So it yeah. was like their way of saying, Hey, maybe we shouldn't show animal cruelty and this kind of thing, but you still yeah, saw like the, un the underground battles. So it was kind of like, okay, whatever. But uh, I don't that's, know. I mean, that's kind of why I like Sonic a little bit better because it actually stayed more or less true to the oh, story yeah. of what it was. Yeah. You know, they didn't really have to change anything. It was just perfect as it was. You know, so I, I don't know what, what Netflix is going to do. I doubt I doubt I'll like it at all. Like, <laughs> so anime, like Attack on Titan, Bleach, all these other things just did not translate well to anime, oh God, to man. live action. I don't know why you thought Pokemon would. Apparently but Bleach whatever. wasn't that bad, but I didn't even really? bother watching it yet. All those, all those Japanese, uh, like, adaptations, I just find extremely weird, especially the um, Death Note adaptation. That was yeah. like, bad. That was just and, bad. Uh, That's why I just. Hey, it started work. with Dragon Ball Z, so yeah. blame them. <laughs> yeah, Anyways, um, we'll have to wait and see when more information comes out about this. I, I, 
I enjoy whenever video games make the translation over to live action. I mean, they've already showed that it can work with The Witcher. So, here's hoping. One um, exemption. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, we got the Halo Showcase earlier this week. And I didn't watch it, but your boy Jules did. So, take it away, buddy. Hey, guys. So, it was... Uh, objectively... It was good. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, so what happened was it was like an hour, hour and a half. Um, the developers and of uh, 313 came in. They talked about their product. They showed actually two gameplays. They showed one on the Xbox Series. They showed it on the Xbox One first. And then, which looked well, terrible. There was frame rate issues out the ass. But a lot of it, a lot of people were complaining yeah. that it was just the streaming. It was like 15 frames. Like It was, it was yeah. bad. Like, so, like, a lot of it, but then the second time they showed it was on Series X, and it played smoothly like it should, it was a fine, it was actually, they did, like, a deathmatch um, between a pro team and the developers, and honestly, objectively, it just, it looks like Halo. <laughs> There's nothing really much I can say. Yeah, this is more uh, Halo. Subject <laughs> Subjectively, I found it boring. I didn't really see anything too crazy about it. Like, I saw some people in the comments section saying that it was like it, it just has a stiffness to it. That, like, I, I also feel this way whenever I played Halo, I also felt like it had just stiffness to it, where it was just like, you yeah, know, kind of, I don't know, you know, and it didn't that just can never get behind other it. games does do so, but. As far as saying from a Halo fan, objectively looking at the Halo fans, they're happy. They're saying it's of like course. Reach. They're saying it's, you know, so much fun, so great. And there are even some people that were like, hey, I'm a PlayStation fan, but this looks really fun. And I said, what does? <laughs> honestly, I I think, like, I, honestly, I think this game, uh, Halo Infinite, is going to be great for Halo fans who are already invested right. in the series. But it's right. not going to bring over any new fans into the series. As a yeah, subjectively, it, it, it didn't really hit anything for me. Now the the, the multiplayer is going to be free for people on Xbox. Yeah, I like and I do like that. I like that a lot. Um, and I do have a PC, be so on PC. yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll turn it on for shits and giggles. You know, I'll I'll see what it's about. It's you know? free. Like why not? <laughs> it's free. So, why but for now, I'm going to be on Splitgate when it comes to multiplayer PCs. I love that game. It's really fun. Um, some people say it plays like Halo. I feel like it's <laughs> a lot smoother and just more my more my taste, you know. Yeah, that's so. fair. That's fair. Um, and a lot of people say Halo Five uh, Infinite looks like faster, more fast paced. So I'm like, yeah. I, I don't really see it. it. Just looks, you know, like Halo. So <laughs> it does. It does look good in my opinion because I saw a little bit of the gameplay and I saw mm -hmm. all the trailers and everything. It does look good. Like, well, it looks I'm smooth. Not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that is not gonna be a good game. It's probably gonna be a fantastic game. It better yeah, be a fantastic yeah. game because they've been waiting for this game forever. But I don't know. I'm I've never like, been that big of a Halo fan, so I'm mm -hmm. just over here, just like, yeah, cool. You guys can have Halo and Gears of War. I'm hanging out, right? But, but it's funny because like, yeah, I've I've come across so many people. It's like, yeah, man, I don't really think Halo is that great, and they're just like. What did you say? I know it's like blasphemy. It's like I'm gonna take her gamer card. It's like I'm sorry. It's like it's a futuristic shooter, and I don't like the fact that you can't aim down sights. That's just annoying to me. Because I'm so oh, used yeah, to that from like I Call know. of Duty and Titanfall and Apex and all, literally every other FPS game out there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I don't like just hip firing everyone. That's just weird to me. I've never gotten used to it ever. That's why I'm horrible at the Halo multiplayer. <laughs> that's why I'm that's, horrible at Doom too. Yeah, Doom does, I'm, and that's I'm the thing so I love Doom. Bad. I'm Doom's so like, bad Doom's, at Doom because it, you can't do Doom's that. Like it, Doom plays like Halo so much, but you have more maneuverability. Anyways, actually, Halo plays like Doom. <laughs> to, uh, well, yeah, but okay. but but also they actually added aiming down sights in Doom Eternal, so that's there is true. that. They did. They did. So uh, they've they've been constantly evolving, and that's the thing about Halo, where I feel like they've kind of evolved, but like not yeah. really. Where it's just like they may have evolved like the mechanics of the guns themselves, but as far as like maneuverability, being able to aim down size, different yeah. kind of things yeah. like that. It like, looks like they added a good, good amount of new stuff to the game, but mm -hmm. it still just looks like more Halo to me, and that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. At the end of the yeah, day, I mean, totally it, cool. But. Yeah, at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. as long as it satisfies the fans, exactly. that's, that's what's really important. Because exactly. I'm going to stick with the best FPS around, a Doom. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see when Halo finally comes out. We, we, there's a release date for that game, right? Yeah, it's December. It comes out there December. There you go. 
decent. Along with Dying Light and apparently the Steam Deck. So December is going to be a loaded month, guys. A yeah, loaded, a lot loaded of Christmas month. gifts. A lot of Christmas gifts. Oh my god. <laughs> Moving on to some PlayStation news. We got the next round of PS Plus games for August out. Actually, these leaked uh, last week, but I didn't want to, you know, even talk to them until they're actually confirmed because a lot of leaks don't pan out. Sometimes they don't come to light. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but this is kind of a lackluster month. Uh, in my opinion. So we got Plants and Zombies, Battle for Neighborville coming out. We got Tennis World Tour 2 and Hunter's Ooh. Arena Legends. Is Tennis T- World Tour 2 on PS4? Yes. Uh, yeah. Plants and Zombies and Tennis World Tour 2 are both on PS4 and then Hunter's Arena Legends is on PS4 and PS5. Nice. So, But yeah, personally, I could literally care less about Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, <laughs> Tennis World Tour, uh, okay... And I love then, tennis. I love tennis, the sport. And that's fair. I'm that's fair. I mean, there's a very niche sports game. So, God. <laughs> uh, and then Hunter's Arena Legends looks like a another battle. I think it's a battle royale. I'm not really sure mm-hmm. what that game is, but I don't know. It just looks like I, a lackluster month to me. And I think that's because we got, like, Plague Innocence last month. So, you know, it's going to be like, they, they do, like, on months, off months, on months, off months. So, you know, it happens. I mean, I've always wanted a new tennis game after Mario Tennis. I, I always want to remaster <laughs> Mario Tennis, and I never really got it. So I was always looking for a new tennis game, but nothing really felt that like hit that itch ever since. Yeah. Um, but I, I've been seeing articles about PlayStation fans being mad about blah, 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 and it's like, dude, like we've been having off month since this shit yeah. started like yeah. four years ago. And, and, like and remember it, when it always when, happens. When, I remember when PS Plus first started with PS4 and like the first. It was mainly indie games. It was mainly indie games. Yeah, those first six, seven months. And that was great. I I got Rezo Gun off that shit. I got Chase the Sun. I got. Oh my God. Yeah, dude. I got so many good games. Uh, Fez, I got. I got Grow Home. Like all these games. So they were like hidden gem indie games. So I missed that from PlayStation. I wish they would do more of those games again. I feel like people have gotten spoiled with this AAA. Like, lately, with the past year and a half, yeah, they've been doing, like, I want, AAA bombs. I just, I, just, like, I just want Dead Cells on PS Plus. Like, just give it to me. I won't play that game so bad, but I really don't I know. feel like paying for it because I know it's, like, a Soulsborne game, and I, I'm i horrible at those games, but I still really want to play it. I mean, it's it. a platformer. It, I mean, it's it a Soulsborne platformer, it, 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 basically. That's what it is. But either but way, that it was looks a, amazing. If you can, if you can play... Uh, it was Salt and Sanctuary, and if you could play uh, Transistor, what was it? what was that other one? Blasphemous. If you can play Blasphemous, uh, yeah. you're fine. Yeah, like I beat Blasphemous, so I know anything <laughs> else is not going to be a challenge. Like, that's and fair. I did it that's for fair. that reason. I was just like, yo, if I can beat this, I can beat anything. Like, <laughs> Honestly, I just want more indie games on PS Plus. Um, I do enjoy all these, you know, PS or AAA games that were game for free. That's kind of dope. But no. I could honestly just do without them. I would love just more indie games that I know I would never play otherwise. <laughs> uh, moving, no, you're right. Moving on to some World War Z news, actually. They're getting kind yes. of an expansion, kind of a director's yes. cut type of thing. Uh, I'm not into <laughs> that game, but this guy is. So, buddy. All right, guys. So what we're talking about here is After War. After, after War. Wow. Uh, World War Z Aftermath. This is why he doesn't lead. <laughs> hey, I need some time. <laughs> you messed up earlier. You just cut it out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I just leave all your mistakes in. <laughs> oh, you asshole. <laughs> um, so what was the aftermath? It's a. It's kind of an expansion. It's twenty dollars if you already have the game. It's forty dollars if you don't. Uh, which I think is fair. You know, nobody's really disputing that. And plus, for what you get, it you're getting like uh, four new story expansion maps. Um, new runs. Um, you're getting a. Fir- the biggest thing is you're getting a first person mode, and I've been wanting a first person mode in World This is, the guy, this is the guy who was shitting I- on the Ghost of Tsushima prices for the director's cut. There's a whole <laughs> economic system with that thing, and it's confusing and convoluted. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it was a first person mode in World War Z and I love World War Z. I played it, I bought it like two, three years ago, played it, it's amazing. Um and the one thing I've wanted was it's it's like third person, I always say it's like third person left for dead. This the main comparison. But yeah. it's really fun, it's really engaging, especially on the higher levels. You know, you really gotta do teamwork and like now they have a first person mode with sixty FPS. Oh. Sixty FPS? Sixty FPS? Are you kidding F-pus. me? Sixty oh. FPS. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> 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 nah, see, that's, so the, that's the thing. I, I think that's one of the reasons I never got the game was because it was third person. I don't like third person mm-hmm. shooters. I just don't. 
I think I think my, first person is so much more immersive and it's just so much more fun and you're just into it more. I mean, it is, but I don't think I would have loved Uncharted as much if it was third, first oh, person. Oh, no. Well, that's and also a shooter at the same time. First person. Well, that's technically. It's an adventure it's a, game. That's it's an, an adventure, adventure game. game. It's but like it's, I, would, it's, I would hate Assassin's Creed if it was first person. That would be fucking weird. Yeah, but Uncharted, the main, that, that's how you fight is with guns. It's, it's technically yeah, a shooter. It, technically, it's an adventure it's a, shooter. It's a cover-based shooter, but it's mainly an action adventure. Anyways. I feel like there are some games where doing a cover, like, especially games that have a cover system and you're it shooting works, things. Yeah, it works better. Third, third person third would be fine. Person. Oh, like, Gears of War, that's fine. Oh, yeah, third person. Yeah, like, yeah. that's great. You know, so, and there's those people that's like, oh, everything should be FPS. I'm like, no, everything should not be no, FPS. Yeah, like, exactly. There's cover-based <laughs> shooters that are way better in third person because otherwise it'd be super weird in first person but other than that i think first person i still prefer overall but anyways no yeah absolutely world War z first person um, that sounds freaking dope i think that's gonna be kind of cool that's gonna add a whole other level to the game you're also getting a new tank class Ooh. um which is called the vanguard so you'll have an electric shield and you'll be able to ram through hordes of zombies it's that gonna be really cool they're cool. adding new melee uh attacks Dual wielding you know weapons. What, you know what they should add. Like, you know what they should add that oh, I don't think is actually in the game. That's kind of part of the lore, at least in the movie. Uh, mm. You should just be able to inject yourself with like a disease, and then just be like for a certain amount of time, and just just you know become immune to the zombies for a while. You know what I mean? Do that's something where you can get infected. That's what they had in the movie. I mean, you can get infected, but that that just means you die and you go attacking your no, teammates. No, but remember, remember in the movie where like they invec- injected themselves with a different virus. Like yeah, a deadly yeah, virus, yeah, just so just so they can get past everybody. Yeah, and, yeah, they, yeah. and they didn't touch them because and that was worked. how that virus yeah. worked. And that'd be that kinda, could be like that'd a, be a really cool mechanic if they added that. No, just for like a temporary immunity. Just yeah, temporary yeah, immunity. yeah. That would be kind of yeah, dope, like be, a power up or some cool. shit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just it'll, it'll come handy. Cool. And it would come handy on the higher waves too. Yeah, so it would be that would be amazing. That would be so good. Um... But yeah, that's I love World War Z. I can't wait for it to come out. I got that back for blood. I'm gonna have a fun multiplayer time for the next six, seven months, man. I got, I gotta be honest. It's gonna be great. Um, yeah, it should, it should be coming out fall, winter, 2021, sometime. Probably. Yeah. Back to some PS5 news. Seagate just really just announced their PS5 ready internal SSD expansions. So these are called the Fire Cuda 530. They're coming in four different tiers. And they're literally going to be able to replace your current SSD that's already in your PS5. If you feel comfortable, you know, replacing that. If not, you can probably take it to like, you know, Best Buy or someplace else. And they will probably be able to install it for you. Personally, I would prefer that unless, you know, you've built your PC and you know how all that shit works. I just don't want to fuck anything off my PS5. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't I don't <laughs> even think I would want to touch it regardless if I did know what I was doing, just because, yeah. like... The most I would do is replace the shell stock. of it. I would just replace the shell, but that's just me. Anyways, the four tiers that you're getting with the Fire Recruited 530 are 500 gigabyte at $170, uh, one terabyte at $275, uh, two terabytes at $570, and four terabytes at $1,000. $1,050. Now, these are internal SSDs. These are these will definitely 100% perform better than any external SSD you could get because those have to go through a USB 3.0. And even though USB 3.0 is fast as hell, it's not as fast as if you directly put it into your freaking system. All right? Yeah. So it will Absolutely. 100% perform better. However, it's still $1,050 for a 4 terabyte SSD where you can probably just get a external SSD for roughly about the same price as the one terabyte internal SSD that they got here. So yeah, I mean yeah, but like everybody, you, you're always gonna want to put performance yeah. over everything, oh, and you want to one hundred percent. And it's always good to future proof your tech. Always, oh, yeah, always, always, always good. Now personally, you know, I don't so. think I don't think it's really that necessary for the PS Five. Now, if you're building a computer, this is gonna be dope. And especially because they're very, very slim already, and they include a heat sink, which is kind of dope. But I don't know. Personally, I don't think I would ever like mod my PS5. Um, probably people are gonna shit on that from 
uh, for me saying that, but I don't know. I'd rather just put in external stuff instead of like tearing the thing apart and installing something. That's just me. I mean, when, as the PC motherland players say it, just get a PC. Exactly. 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 And <laughs> at, some point modding, will, you, at some point, I will. But. If you want modding capabilities, just a fork up the money. If you can sit there and pay $1,000. For a four terabyte yeah. hard drive, a PC, a good high end PC is only maybe three hundred bucks more. It's it, like two, well, two three hundred bucks more. You'll get a good a good even, high end PC. You're running about three thousand dollars. I mean, like I I paid PC. like sixteen. I paid like sixteen hundred for mine. Mine's is mid to mid to high end PC. Um, I paid sixteen hundred. But and, does it have color changing shit on it? <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I'm I'm <laughs> it's <kidding. beautiful. laughs> Honestly, I would just put my entire I'll put like a super high end game PC into like a Windows XP like Dell Tower from like the nineteen nineties. Mm-hmm. I would probably fucking just do that. <laughs> just the I mean, yeah, you want the highest the of high people. of high PCs. Yeah, you're paying about three thousand oh, yeah. dollars. But oh, yeah. you don't even have to do that to get the <laughs> performance that you want. Exactly. Um but so like either way, if you're into modding your consoles, this is good news for you. Because this is kind of dope. We haven't really seen, you know, console-ready, you know, uh, storage expansions in a while. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of cool. I don't think we yeah, even a lot of things saw it at all for the PS4, except for, like, mm-hmm. we, th- you had, like, the uh, storage expansion thing that went on. But that, I think that was by Sony themselves. And so. a lot of people... We're just complaining. A lot of, that's the one thing. That's the one thing a lot of people were complaining about. Where it's just like, oh man, I don't have any SSD expansion storage. Look at the Xbox. They got, yeah, ex- they got expansion storage. So yeah. I'd like, rather finally, just, I'd rather just do something external. Honestly, that's yeah, just, that's just me. That's just me. I'd just rather do something external. It's just easier <laughs> and less expensive. <laughs> but we're running out of time, and we really want to move on to this. The actual pressing news that we wanted to talk about more. And put the spotlight on. And that is this whole news coming out of California and Activision Blizzard. So, if you don't know, um, I think this broke over the weekend. But California is essentially suing Activision Blizzard for basically running a flat boy, perver- perversive flat, frat boy culture, uh, ongoing sexual harassment. There's been a two-year investigation into this. And this mm. goes, and this includes everyone from just like, regular ass male employees all the way up to the freaking president of the goddamn company and higher ups in the world of warcraft dev team and everything so uh if you don't know uh this has been going on for a very very long time according to a lot of employees that have come out and you know said they told their stories basically this is basically the gaming version of the me too movement um there's been, like I said, ongoing sexual harassment. Uh, at one point, even a female employee committed suicide after a company trip after have or during a company trip after having a sexual relationship with a male supervisor. And she also had the instance of where, at a I guess at a party, a lot of the male you know employees were passing around new photos of her just in the party. Right. And I'm just like, what? The actual help. President uh, J. Allen Brock apparently knew about this, and he just kind of enabled it. He just let it go. He didn't really pay any mind to it. And one of the higher-ups of uh, uh, the World of Warcraft dev team had various instances where he was just allowed to just do whatever the hell he wanted to do. Like, the higher-ups knew what he was doing, and they just let him do it. Mm-hmm. So at this point, uh, over 2,000 people have signed a letter condemning the response from Activision Blizzard. They basically came out and said that this suit was irresponsible and they were just like trying to basically just gaslighting California, telling, saying that they were just driving out companies by doing this kind of thing. And I'm just like, so you're saying that California is driving out companies for calling them out on their bullshit. Honestly, I wouldn't want those companies working for that state anyways. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> like, goddamn. Uh, on Wednesday, the employees did stage a walkout. And since then, we've had various female employees and even some male employees come out and tell their stories and sign a letter. There's been so much going on. And 
uh, at this point, I don't even think we have even more of an update about the story. We just know that the mm. suit is still happening. The walkout happened on Wednesday. There's a lot of, like, you know, conflicting arguments on each end. But in, you know, in the grand scheme of things, honestly, the video game industry does have a huge problem with women in the industry and treating them equally in general, but especially about yeah. sexual harassment. Like, it's a big mm. issue. No, it is. It is. Um, and it's it's kind of crazy because, like, you've, you've – and we've seen instances like this before. Like, you know, the team Dying Light, the reason why Dying Light took so long to come out was because people were getting fired because yeah. of things happening behind the scenes that were not culture, were not professional at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's happened with other games. You've seen it in other games, you know, yeah. at other companies, but th it's never been on this. It, it has been on this scale maybe a couple times in the past, but, Yeah, this isn't know, the this first is, sexual harassment suit that a game yeah. developer has seen. Uh, mm -hmm. And it certainly will not be the last. I'll say I think this might spark even more. So I wouldn't be surprised if we yeah. see a lot of other devs or a lot of other teams come under fire. And I, I feel like it's only because of the fact that gaming has gone through such a transition in the last 30 years where, you know, people used to get made fun of for playing video games. You know, I remember getting teased by girls when I was a kid, you know, and now all of a sudden women are starting to think it's cool. And it's just like, I feel like on some level, it's like, a, well, ha ha, we're going to treat you like shit because you fucking teased us all these years for thinking that, you know, what we do is lame. So it's just like, it's it's childish, it's petty, you know, yeah. it's annoying. You know, you shouldn't blame somebody else for, you shouldn't blame them for somebody else's mistake. You know what the, I mean? The thing, the thing is, my kind of argument to that is, like, it wasn't just, like, girls and women who were, like, saying, like, video games are stupid way back in the day. It was kind of, like, everyone, because it wasn't popular back then. So anyone who was, like, right. anyone who was, like, popular, even the guys, were, like, shitting on playing video games and stuff until it became something fun to do, something popular, and we started mm -hmm. seeing, like, all, like, video games being thrown into limelight. That's when people started accepting it more. So I, I mean, wouldn't yeah, say, I wouldn't say it, it was more women in general. I but mean, we have been seeing more women in the video game industry as of late. A lot yeah. more. But it's still very much uneven and like and that's the whole oh, thing. Yeah. It when yeah, guys do it too, but when you're talking about sex specifically, you know it yeah. You, yeah, you no, didn't I, have I, I, you I didn't understand. have any yeah, you know, you didn't have any women in the gaming industry when it came out, you know, yeah. and for the first twenty years it was purely a man's thing. You know, even being into something like a computer. Computers used to be like Oh, you gotta come. You're into computers, or you build computers. With fucking, that's boring. <laughs> it's just yeah, like, yeah. All right, well, I'll see you in twenty years when I'm a millionaire. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just like we. You see the subculture, and that's why you know you have all this female, like, over sexism in gaming as well. Where it's just oh, like, 100%. oh my god, there's a girl in there's a girl in a video game. Oh my god, there's a girl streaming a video game. Oh my god, I have to watch this. You are my dream wife. Come, come to me. Like yeah. that. That whole thing, you know, it's just because there's such an imbalance when it comes to video games between genders, and it's slowly changing. So it's just it like is, it's it nice. Is. We've been seeing more, you know, female characters in games. We've been seeing more female leads in dev teams. We're seeing a lot of stuff happening, and that's great. However, there's still mm. this history of sexual harassment and women not getting yeah. treated fairly in the video game industry, and that just needs to change. It just does. And that and is, I think it, once is even outside the video game like industry in terms of like developers and you know all these teams. Mm -hmm. It's also streamers and regular ass gamers and mm -hmm. just that kind of stuff in general. And the, like the whole like sexualization once, just needs to change. Yeah, once and I feel like once uh, females playing video games becomes more normalized, I think all that will go away. I think it's it's literally like. Uh, some type of version of just like because it's new because it's new oh, it's yeah. flashy oh yeah it's, it's gaudy it's pretty you know people are going to flock to it you oh, know yeah. but like once it becomes like the standard i feel like she's like oh chick playing video games cool well exactly exactly i'm just gonna, gonna go to this other guy because yeah he's, he's better good yeah, exactly <laughs> or she's good whatever anything yeah people yeah so, I, I i agree with that but in terms of this uh, there's still news coming out, so this is definitely going to be a story to follow, and we will touch on it uh, as more of the story develops, as we get more updates. You can also go check out Phil DeFranco. He's done, a, mm. I think, at least two videos 
on this topic mm -hmm. and he links all this stuff in the bottom just like we do so if you want to know more um, if you want a more of a deep dive more of a professional deep dive into this story definitely check out philip defranco <laughs> um young yeah story. also did a couple videos yeah. about it yeah um you can go check him out. He actually has like the screenshots of the employees exactly. on there and on Twitter. You know the whole uh, yeah, so letters into Activision. You know all everything Activision said back and rebuttal all that stuff, which is kind of messed up. If I want to just say real quick, like the way that they responded in oh, such a fucked. public, it was fucked. political form. Hey, I feel like I'm I'm an executive, and I feel like I had a good time in Activision. It's not about you, like, right? It's exactly. Not about it's just like you. okay, you know, congratulations, like, you had a good time. Even the cool, higher up like, women in the company have been saying like, "This is so stupid. Why are you doing this? I'm fine. I'm just like, no, my God. oh God, <laughs> I have. But anyways, guys, keep make sure you guys check the story. Go check out Young Yia. Young it's spelled Yia. Young and then Y E A. Go check yeah. out him. Go check out Philly D uh, for more coverage on this topic and just track this. We'll jump back into this maybe next week if there's any developments into it. But as soon as there's mm -hmm. more updates, we will talk about it again. Anyways, guys, please let us know all your thoughts about anything we've talked about today please. in the comment section below. Again, please share this video with your friends on social media, wherever you want, just so this cover or story gets more coverage and it gets more you know views and awareness in general. Other than please. that, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get up to 200 subs. We're going to be doing that game giveaway, remember? And please hit that bell so you can notify whenever the videos, live, videos go live or whenever we decide to stream. We're also on Twitch and Facebook as well. So go check those links out. Links in the description below. Guys, thank you so much for watching today stay excellent sorry about the long episode and we'll see you guys in the next video peace out <laughs> see you